bike isn't starting. So we just stopped to get a new bearing and now the bike will not start. The lights won't come on. The horn doesn't go. Oh my god. Oh my god. The sun was kind of lowering on the horizon and we knew it was going to be dark soon. That was the last thing we wanted was to be stuck out in the middle of the mountains yeah. on a motorcycle that didn't work with an injured wrist. <laughs> For sure. Friends are just so awesome. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa No Tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places, places we'll go. go through rain and through sleet and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to join us along our epic ride. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Up and Overloaded. If you're just joining us at our channel for the first time, I am Marissa Notier. I'm Tim Notier and this bad boy is <laughs> Dorco, this bad girl I should say. Yes, Dorco is our Bajaj Pulsar 220 that we've been taking around here in Indonesia. Last episode, um, I had a little bit of a fall. Are you all right? Are you all right? I was getting off of the motorcycle and kind of stepped the wrong way, fell backwards, and my wrist went into a gutter that I didn't see, and I hurt my left hand and my left wrist. It wasn't my fault this time. It was not your fault at all, no. Um, it was just a freak accident and it hurt really, really bad. We were way up in the mountains in Western Java, pretty far from the nearest town. Although Java is extremely populated, there are houses and stores and restaurants There's and everything you can imagine everywhere. all along the side of the roads, that's right. But there wasn't like a town with a proper hospital or doctor that we could go to for quite a ways, at least an hour's worth of riding. But I was able to get on the motorcycle and we headed in the direction of the nearest big town. Wonderful day, minus now Marissa's arm is really hurt. It's not broken though. I can move everything. Like the initial pain was really, really bad. But now, you know, it just kind of aches. Yeah, there was a ditch and she, it was just a worst case scenario of everything. There was a ditch and she lost her footing and then fell. I mean, I guess our number one concern now is me being able to get on and off the motorcycle safely. So I pulled over at an Indomart, right? Which is like the 7-Eleven, you know, of Indonesia. You know, I just wanted to put in a new coordinates on our little, my, my Google Maps. And I put something in, I turned Darko back on, and... Darko did not turn on. It would not, she wouldn't turn over. The bike isn't starting. So we just stopped to get a new bearing and now the bike will not start. The lights won't come on. The horn doesn't go. Oh my god. Oh my god. Even the, the dash would like go out. And so I, I thought it was battery related and I know very minimum about motorcycles and how they work. And I know that the battery is a, a, a pretty primary function of a motorcycle starting. <laughs> Oh, we got, no we don't. We got lights though. Well, we had lights. Oh man, our awesome day. Just 
turned not so awesome. But when I looked at the, I took the side panel off, and when I looked at the battery, I wiggled some wires as about, you know, as a professional <laughs> does, right? Jiggled it a little just to make sure that nothing right. was like arcing or sparking and nothing was loose. Uh, but it didn't seem to be the case. Right. And then everything else about the Bajaj 220, I know nothing. It's just not receiving any power whatsoever. Like every once in a while the lights will flicker on, but it's got to be a short or something going on with the battery. That was the last thing we wanted was to be stuck out in the middle of the mountains yeah. on a motorcycle that didn't work with an injured wrist. <laughs> For sure. But uh, luckily there's these little mechanic shops, tire shops, oil change shops, little bike shops every 10 feet seemingly. Yeah. And I flagged down a gentleman. He said, yeah, wait up a second. And he got on his little scooter and went somewhere and came back with a, a mechanic. And they were messing around with the battery too. They thought it was the battery, which I had assumed as well. He had two wires that hooked up to like just a little, like almost like a turn signal light bulb. You know, and he put it on the battery and the light bulb would turn up. Didn't really tell you a, a wattage, <laughs> but it lit the light bulb. But yeah. He fiddled around with a couple things and jiggled things more heavily and unscrewed and kind of cleared off some of the corrosion on the battery terminal because it was pretty much like 80% corrosion. <laughs> Darko started. Yes. Number five. Oh, it was great. It was amazing. Oh, it works, it works, yay. So now, as you can hear, the bike is running thanks to that man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I think it was just a loose wire. Um, he messed around with the battery, the battery seemed to be okay. Then he kind of took off some of the corrosion on the battery. So Dorco is running and we are going to find somewhere to rest the bike and ourselves. I mean, the people here are so nice, so industrious. Um, nobody seemed like, oh no, this is a terrible situation, yeah. like what was going through my head. Everyone involved was like, oh yeah, we'll get this yeah. figured out, no problem. And sure enough, he did. Indeed. Thank you, my friend. All right, here she is, purring. So we were finally able to continue on our way. Yeah, but my our two troubles girls. weren't over yet. My, my lady friend. <laughs> had a broken wrist, yes. my, my bike had broken parts. I, uh, phone mount. A little limp. A little, I don't know, it keeps drooping. I mean, there are pretty much nothing but bumps. Alrighty, folks, imagine you're going down, going down the street, and then this dude wants you out of his way. Look at those, that wall of sound attached to that thing. Holy hell. As we were going down the road, it wasn't oh, yeah. that much farther away that all of a sudden I, I hit felt a bump. something against my leg. You hit a bump and then I looked below and I saw this chunk of the motorcycle. It was actually the fairing. It's just a plastic fairing. So when you say chunk underneath of the us. motorcycle, it wasn't like, you know, one of the, the cylinder engine. heads. Yeah. No, but it was a big piece of plastic yeah. just roll underneath us and then I saw it in the distance. Fender just fell off. Not a fender. What is this? Fairing. That's the F word I was looking for. Chris had to jump off, I pulled up to get gas. Some guy actually brought me yeah. the fairing. It was so nice, he stopped and picked it up for us. In every episode, we're gonna just say how how amazing and yes. are. They're just very, very, very friendly. We're gonna Gorilla Tape it. We actually didn't have access to the Gorilla Tape at the moment, and so we no. just strapped the fairing onto the back of the bike and continued on our way, just limping towards this possible hotel of the future. Yeah. <laughs> My knees hurt. This bike is uh, pretty cramped, to say the least. So we came to a town, Tianzhur, and in that town they had lots of hotel options plus hospitals. So we were like, all right, this is perfect for us. Okay, we've arrived at a hotel. I'm gonna go check it out. 
We found this hotel called Oyo, which yeah. apparently there's a bunch of these all across Indonesia. I wanted to show you around our little hotel room here. These are called Oyos. They're very, very well priced. And yeah. this one had everything we needed. Air conditioning, a lovely view of these rice paddies. Rice fields with these women working in it. Oh, it was and so And so many nice. cats. These cats, guys, they have knurled tails. Knurled tails. I'm going to say knurled. <laughs> so the cats here, we noticed, all have these little nubby knurled tails. Yeah. I love these cats and their, yeah. their tails. At first I thought like there was some like hideous thing they did to like chop these cat's tails off or break I'm them. I'm like, what's like, wrong with these tails? These kind people, then they have like this weird fetish of hurting cats. <laughs> no. But it's not the case. But it's because they breed them that way. Because it brings them good luck and they catch, they think they catch rats better. This has been going on for generations upon generations here in Java. They have been breeding this specific type of stubby tailed or gnarled, gnarled. tailed cat yeah. because they believe that they are better luck and better ratters. And look at their tails. Oh. I met a gentleman, he had a little Honda 150 something or another with like some uh, Hot Wheels yeah. like decal on it. <laughs> really, really nice. Just again, everybody's super, super friendly. I'm Tim. What is your name? Oh, my name is Risal. One more time? Risal. Risal? Risal. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much, my yes, friend. Mister. You have a good night, sir. Yes, mister. I asked him where I would be able to get some ice. I wanted just a little ice for her wrist, and he, yeah. he had like a five-pound bag. I know. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. Yeah, so Marissa, after spending the night icing her wrist. And wrapping it up. And I wrapped it. And it was hurting a lot. I could move all my fingers. So yeah. I figured nothing was broken, but there are so many little bones. I just wanted to be sure. Woke up this morning, really enjoying this hotel. Take a look at the view outside of our window. Awesome, isn't it? So we went to a hospital. That's right, there was we... a big one not too far away. Yeah. So we're on the way to a hospital. We've taken some public transportation. The guy at the hotel was nice enough to uh, figure out which bus we had to take, but I don't know how we're gonna get back. But we'll figure that out. You know, I just want to get an X-ray for my hand. We took a, a little mini bus, a micro bus, if you yes. will, and so we took public transportation, which was awesome. It cost like negative five cents <laughs> to get in this little bus that zooms around and. We just hoped it was going in the right direction. Right. <laughs> and it did. It turned right where we needed to turn it right. Did. You know it dropped us off to go. right yeah. in front of the hospital. We went into the hospital and got registered in there. You know, going to the hospital is never a very nice experience, yeah. of course. But this one, the people were so nice and accommodating to us. Yeah. There was a woman who we had helped a us translate. Translator. Yes. Suchi, thank you so much. Tini Makasi, you really, were amazing. Really good English. Helped us every step of the way, walked us through everything. I got an x-ray on my hand. Give my hand x-ray. Yeah. Can you give me a thumbs up? <laughs> so I just got out of the x-ray room took two different x-rays of my hand. We were able to see the x-rays um, and it didn't look like any bones exploded, but we're not doctors, we don't know what we're looking for. So we are now currently waiting for the doctor to review the x-rays and come back to us with the results. But everyone here has been so nice and friendly and helping us through this whole process. So uh, yeah, things have been quite good. The doctor, she examined the x-rays and told me the good news that I had not broken any bones. All good. Oh, good. Thank you. Yay. I had most likely just 
pulled a muscle along my thumb and lower part of my wrist. Yeah. And so I was going to wear a little bit of a sling just to keep it steady. You're going to wear a whole sling. A whole sling, that's right. Okay, Claire. <laughs> and it should heal within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Wow. They were so nice to us. It was amazing. We got the x-ray and everything and I'm so happy that I don't have any broken bones. And right now it is doing much, much better. Check this out. You want to see it in action? Yes, Look at that. It, it works. It, it does works. all the things. It does hurt sometimes, but yeah. it is doing much, much better. It's kind of like calling off sick from work, right? Like you feel like crap, but as soon as you call off sick from work, like you automatically feel like 75% <laughs> better. And you're like, wow, I don't oh, feel nearly as great. awful. And she gave us a bunch of medicine. And then, you yes. know, she's describing what everything does. She's like, and one more thing. And we're like, okay, what? And she's like, selfie. And then yeah. it like broke out to like a Vogue session with us, the nurse and the doctor, and Marissa and I. And it was so, we'll post it up here, but it they sent so us sweet. a little, they posted on Facebook, like a thanks for trusting us with your, with your care <laughs> thing. It was just so nice. And then after all of it, we pay, right? And it's like 800,000, which is like, $50, yeah. And then she's got this little bag that, you know, has the x-rays and stuff in it, and she gives it to us. And we look in it, and there's like a coffee cup she gave merchandise us. Merchandise from the hospital. Yes. Hospital merchandise in that bag. Gift bag. <laughs> a gift bag. It was ah. so, 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 so nice. I mean, this hospital experience turned out to be one of the nicest experiences. I, I said we need to go I to had. the hospital more often. I <laughs> free stuff. Obviously the outcome was also very good, so that helped, yeah. but the treatment that we got there was very special and we will never forget our time in Tianjur and going to the Tianjur hospital. This is true. Yeah, and we were going to rest one more day and then take off into... Uh, the unknown. Oh, the unknown folks. We decided that even though Dorco had a few hiccups on that mountain road, yeah, the I mountain roads were definitely going to be the way that we were going to go. But then uh, after about a week of jet lag and then Marissa hurting her her hand, we weren't done yet with, uh, with Java's revenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. Roughest road we've been down so far. Uh, just kind of like an update about last night. I got pretty sick. But that will all be in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up. Thumb and a half. And hit the subscribe button below. Double ding! And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. And not only do they have gnarled tails, but I think there's something to it because they are the sweetest they're cats. The, they're the kindest. So, so nice. One no, cat but, followed Tim. Oh, I had my flute. <laughs> I'm walking down the alley. <laughs> Now I want a gnarled cat. A gnarled tail. It's a gnarled tail cat. Gnarly. It's gnarled. And they're no, so cute. No, it's gnarled. <laughs>